Ah, uh, we... Here is Excellent Men Legends 249. Our final Age of Egg video. And we end on possibly the worst note in this pentatonic scale. This one is like so many of my hatreds all together at once. We have... A great cover by Michael Super Saiyan. Really good art and composition. Shame that I ate everything that this cover represents. This issue, it is all about Rouge and Mr. Magnet being a couple. And Michael Lucifer, he is doing the ad Christopher Clairvoyant trick. Of evoking Mr. Magnets' past to argue that Mr. Magnets is great. The worst thing about this issue, though, is the art, which is by Raphael the Turtle. Art is a subjective thing. People can like a type of art, people can not like a type of art. But my issue with Raphael the Turtle is purely objective. Every single character is drawn at an angle, usually looking down at the floor, because he either cannot draw faces or he cannot be asked to. We have a close-up of Mr. Magnets here, looking down at the floor. Our here, Hitler, looking down at the floor. Hitler, he's still looking down at the floor. We have a young Mr. Magnets here looking down at the floor. And even Hitler, when he is facing and pointing at Mr. Magnets, well, his face, he's still looking down at the floor. With other artists, I recognise this trick being done to make drawing easier. But with Raphael the Turtle, it really is every panel and it is just fucking diabolical. And here is the other thing that he does to try and mix it up, to try and disguise it. He has low angle shots on faces. They're never drawn straight on, ever. Uh, there's another one. Uh, we have got... Both of his faces here. We have Hitler looking up from a low angle. And then Mr. Magnets looking down at the floor. And there's a bonus one in the background. I kind of just have another video where I complain about things I have already complained about before. And that's all this issue really offers. So instead, I'll point out... When I do me videos, I watch all of my videos back once after I have recorded them. And then I will upload them if I didn't mess it up somewhere or sum it what I was trying to say wasn't very clear. But on that last video about this series, when I was talking about Cyclist and Vixen... I kept calling it disgusting. Over and over again, I just kept saying it was disgusting. It was a disgusting idea. They are a disgusting couple. And I wasn't really adding to that. And I genuinely got worried that it was sounding like I was against it purely on the basis... That she was black and I must hate interracial relationships. And then I realised I am also against this here. Mr. Magnets and Rouge. I am against them as a couple. And I got worried that maybe people will read into that as me being against it because he is Jewish. And I didn't want in a mixing like that either. If you want, 
In the last few Excellent Men videos, there has been more than enough fuel to paint me as a white purist. Trust us, there isn't any racist or anti-Semitic angle to me hating these relationships. I mean, I haven't even brought up how... The one woman that the Jewish Mr. Magnets fancies also wears a costume that is the colour scheme of money. Actually, if I go back, there is... Where is it? There's a funny bit. Uh, here. Mr. Magnets, he shows Rouge this framed picture. And Raphael the Turtle... He still has her looking at the floor when surely she's meant to be looking at this painting. She's like barely even looking in its direction. It's at best in her periphery vision. Mr. Magnets, he's also looking down at the floor too, but at least he is close enough to the painting that it is in his line of sight. But my god, he must be focusing on this portrait's hands rather than the face. I'm done talking about how shite the art is. If you cannot see it, you are brain dead. If you think Raphael the Turtle is one of the big super mega stars, gone to the opticians because... Every panel is a pile of shit, with characters looking down at the floor instead of whoever they are talking to. I'm also not going to talk about this holocaust shite, because I have always found it offensive the way they play up this real world event to try and make Mr. Magnets seem like a hero. Instead, we will talk about why Mr. Magnets and Rouge is an awful parent. Because I never really went into detail with this, I don't think. This couple, they began in one of Christopher Claravoyant's final issues on Uncanny Excellent Men. It was only hinted at in that, and the reason we got that was because Christopher Claravoyant, he actually wanted to use Tom Iddleston from 4 Comics and have a Rouge and Tom Iddleston thing because Christopher Claravoyant, he loved nothing more than just pilfering bad guys and mythology from other books and then forcing them into being part of his mythology for the excellent men. He left the books so we never really got any more from that Rouge subplot until the mid-90s and Martin Quaid. Martin Quaid, he tried forcing Rouge and Mr. Magnets into being a permanent thing. That was his main, and maybe only, contribution to Age of Armageddon. He was also, it was his idea, he was the one who came up with de-aging Mr. Magnets and giving them amnesia. And having him join the excellent men so he could be with Rouge. Much later, it turns out it wasn't the real Mr. Magnets. It was a younger clone. But the original intention was it was the real Mr. Magnets. Why someone would be so firm on making a couple of the two... When they also feel the need to de-age and give one of them amnesia. That should be proof that they didn't really belong together to begin with. That stuff, it all thankfully went away for a while. The early noughties. There wasn't any of that awful ship. 
But then Michael Lucifer came along and as much as I like some of what he did and a lot of what he did, his affinity for having Mr. Magnet and Rouge be a couple was a consistent problem with this run for me. For a while, the book, it seems to be built around the two of them being romantically involved. There's about 12 different covers for this series that are just like cheap romance novel covers with the two of them. Uh, some stuff here with Vixen, which is all right character building. It's just a pity that we are shitting on Cyclus to do so. And also that the art is fucking awful. Vixen, she has decided she wants to be more like her Age of Egg version. So she cuts her hair. And then she is standing straight in front of a mirror looking at herself. And she is still at an angle so that she is looking down. Two people here having a conversation where they both are looking at each other's shoes. Come on, man. You've got to see this. This is... I'm not being unfair or mental... This is absolutely a bad artist. Also, prepare for an Ed Gambit and Vixen romance so that Michael Lucifer can continue with his Rouge and Mr. Magnet's agenda. Uh, we also have some Dan Stevens stuff, but the art is horrible. And this will set up the next story on the book, which has a good amount of Dan Stevens. Uh, this issue, though, and two other issues, they have they have a bad guy called Endgame. Uh, this space Nimrod looking fucker at the back, Endgame. Scalpers and cunts on eBay, they inflate the value of these issues, saying it is the first appearance of Endgame, to try and trick people into thinking it is a key issue for Avengers Endgame. It is sickening. But yeah, Rouge and Mr. Magnets, it's a horrible relationship. It's creepy. The age thing is clearly a comic book writer's wishful dreaming. You never see it the other way around, do you? You never have a young male hero in a relationship with a 70-year-old woman... Or at least someone who, like Mr. Magnet, looks their age. This is a relationship just to prop up Mr. Magnet and make him being a hero have even more footing. Also, I looked at all eight issues Raphael the Turtle does on this series. And he reuses this panel of Rouge five times. But we end with an uncomfortable and gross kiss between them. And who wants to see this to begin with? Avoid this issue like the plague. Why couldn't they just cut the Mr. Magnets and Rouge stuff out of the previous issue and swap it around with the scenes in this with Vixen and Dan Stevens and then you can just ignore this one issue. That way we just have this one ugly comic about this ugly couple. I do want to tear this up, but 
it's only just escaping it. It's like just dipping its toes over the line consistently. But it's not all the way over yet. Just avoid this. And it doesn't really have that much to add to Age of Egg other than a little development for Vixen. Even the Dan Stevens bits, they start spinning off into other directions here. It's just the four or five Vixen pages that link this to Age of Egg. I'll give this seven thumbs up, but it is almost all God awful. I hate doing edits like this at the end of the video, but yeah, it makes sense that they are all looking at the floor. But that doesn't excuse that this artist would have done this regardless of the context of the scene. Like, you know, any other scene in a comic. And the other thing was, when I was pointing out this face, looking at the ground, I was holding the comic and it was at an angle where... It looked like he was looking the correct way.